Hi everybody, Ricky from Connery Meadows Farm. I have to go into town, so I thought I would bring you along for the ride and I would show you how to make a very basic, what I would call a, a grocery store soap. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the grocery store, we're gonna pick out the oils that we can use in the soap, and then we will come home and we will make that batch of soap. Well, my plan today is when we go to the grocery store, we're gonna look for lard is a great one we can use. Um, you can even use Crisco. So maybe we'll grab some Crisco too. Uh, olive oil and coconut oil. Really, those are like the main ones that you need to make a really great recipe. All right, so I am in the oil section in the grocery store. We talked about olive oil. Don't play the prices for that. This stuff here works just as well. Much better price. The next thing that we're probably gonna wanna grab is, I'm short, sorry. So, coconut oil. It's not a bad price. But that's the next thing you're gonna wanna put in your cart. So another thing you can get at the grocery store for relatively inexpensive is lard. Um, again, you don't need to pay for the name brand. This brand works just as good. Um, sometimes I'll grab Crisco as well. Either one of these are gonna make a really hard soap. You can even find goat's milk in the grocery store. Any goat's milk will work. So we're back from the grocery store. The first thing we're gonna need to do is find yourself your ice cube trays then then you're going to take your milk and you're going to pour your milk in your ice cube trays and you're going to put this in the freezer um you're not going to be able to make soap today with the milk because milk has sugars in it and the lye will burn the sugars if it's too hot in order to avoid having the sugars get burnt that are in the milk we freeze it this is an easy way you can easily pop these out and get your proper measurements Get your milk in the freezer. Tomorrow we make soap. You'll notice as we're making this soap that I am not giving you the ingredient percentages or amounts on the screen. I have included the recipe. Down below, there's three different recipes. One that is made with olive oil, coconut oil, and lard. One that is made with olive oil, coconut oil, and Crisco and one that is made with olive oil, coconut oil, Crisco, and lard. That is the recipe that I use while I'm showing you the steps. I do strongly suggest when you're first starting out to make very small batches, maybe one, two, or three bars worth. So the first thing I like to do when I'm making goat's milk soap is to get my milk into the container and weighed out so it has some time to thaw a little bit because um, when the milk is completely hard, it's um, really difficult to get it to melt down. So we talked about you guys freezing your milk into ice cube trays, which is easier for weighing. Um, because we have a farm and we have goats, I actually pre-weigh mine into baggies. So this is the exact amount that I need for my recipe. Add that into my where I'm gonna mix my lye. All right. This then I'm just gonna set aside into my sink and it's gonna stay there while I weigh out all the rest of my oils. So the next thing I'm gonna do. This is the bowl that I've chosen to weigh all of my oils into. After I weigh them, I'm gonna scrape them out and I'm gonna put them in this pot. And then I'm gonna put this pot on the stove. Alternatively, you could weigh them in a container and then pour them into a glass container and you could melt them in your microwave if you didn't wanna use the stove, that works too. So one thing just to make note of, um, when you're making soap with lye, all of the metal that you have to use, it has to be stainless steel. So on the bottom of this pot, it says stainless steel. So this is safe for making soap. Or plastic you can use 
It just has to be a number five. The first ingredient on our list is olive oil. So let's turn our scale on and let's get that one added. Okay, and you can see I am using um, Kirkland. So this is Costco olive oil. Like I said, any olive oil will do. This is just the one that I buy because I can buy it in bulk and save a little bit of extra money. All right, we've weighed out our olive oil. Let's add it to this pot. The next oil on our list to weigh out is our coconut oil. So my coconut oil is probably a little bit harder than what you guys are working with from the grocery store at the moment. But um, I, again, have bought this in bulk for a little bit better of a deal. All right, and again, we're gonna take and we're gonna transfer the coconut oil into the same pot. In the description box below, I've given you a couple different options for recipes. And so this is where you can change it. You can either just use lard here and make the soap. You could just use Crisco here and make the soap, or you can do a combination of large and Crisco. All those recipes are in the description box below. I'm actually just gonna do a combination of the two just to add a little variety. So this is actually our home rendered lard, and I have a video on how to do that. I'll put it in the description box below. Um, we use our own lard. You don't have to, store-bought lard is just fine. And uh, Crisco. All right, so let's weigh this out. Let's start with the Crisco. I'll add this to our pot. All right, now home rendered lard. Um, this one was stored in the fridge after the last time I used it, so it's a little bit harder. So I'm just going to pop this in the microwave. The uh, lard has been warmed up a little bit, making it a little more pliable. And uh, now I can put it in a little easier. Lard is in. Put it in to my pot. Now we are ready to melt all the oils together. So at this point, you really have two options. You can put this pot on the stove, or alternatively, you could take everything from here, put it in your bowl like this, and pop it in the microwave. The end result is still the same. We're just trying to melt all the oils together. I'm just gonna turn my stove on. And we are going to go down to very low, just between low and simmer. We don't wanna scorch this, it's just a slow process of melting this down. And I bring the other bowl that I was using to measure everything to put my spatula in so that I'm not messing up anything else and I can have it to help me stir my oils. So now we just wait, periodically come back, stir these oils until they're completely melted. While my oils are melting, I take that time to get my soapbox lined. Now, this is a homemade soapbox. I um, made this out of scraps that we had around the farm. I will put a link in the description box below of the video that I made showing you how to do this. It has little things on the side, open and close it. Nothing fancy, but it works great. Uh, I'm using parchment paper today to line it. You could use um, milk jugs. You can you could use uh, dollar store items. There are many things that you can use to uh, use as a soap mold. It doesn't have to be anything fancy at all. When I first started soaping, I think I used a cardboard box and um, grocery store bags. So again, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get started. At 
this point the oils are almost all melted. There's just a few little pieces left. I don't actually wanna leave the heat on at this point. I'm gonna shut my stove off and I'm just gonna let the heat that's already there finish melting these off. Then we just have to wait for them to cool down just a touch before we work on adding our goat's milk. We don't wanna scorch the goat's milk, so it's important to make sure that these cool down a little bit. I think one of the things that people get scared of the most when they talk about making cold process or even hot process soap is that they're worried about the lye. <clears throat> now, lye can burn. There's definitely no mistake in that. If you put on all your safety gear and you handle it properly, it shouldn't be any issues. So, gloves are a must. I use these lovely little kitchen gloves, dollar store. Um, and they're reusable, so they're not a single use. <clears throat> Some sort of safety glasses. Uh, when I first started out, I did a lot of with this. Nowadays, with everything going on, <clears throat> it's actually easier to find a face shield, and this is my preference now. Uh, One other piece of equipment that you probably want to get is a gun, heat gun. It's great because I can easily check temperatures of my oils, and right now that's... Uh, still pretty hot. You want to be down in the 80 to 100 range for doing goat's milk. Okay, so now that I am appropriately suited up, let's go ahead and measure out the lye. Now, uh, when you're first starting out, a really great place to find lye is uh, Home Hardware. I can put a link for it below. Uh, it's really good lye. I used it for years before I was able to finally buy in a bigger bulk amount. I very carefully open this up. You can see on the side, it talks about the fact that it's caustic, it will burn. I have my scale ready to go. I have a little scoop that I use to take this out. The home hardware ones actually have a nice little pour that you can pour out, which is kind of helpful, but I don't have that with this kind, so I have this handy dandy little scoop that I use. Now, sometimes the static, the lye will stick to things, so it's, you have to be very, very careful. Now what I will do is I will right away take this little guy over and rinse him off in the sink. My workstation is ready to go, so I use uh, old flyers or newspapers to protect my counters. I have my hand mixer ready to go. Um, I actually picked this one up at a secondhand store uh, and I've been using it for seven or eight years now. So um, I also have a sample mold that I usually put a little bit of soap in and then my mold's ready to go and a spoon helped me along. Let's do a quick oil check. Yeah, so we're right in the range now. So I am actually gonna go ahead and uh, mix up my lye and milk. Right, everybody, here comes the so-called scary part. Um, I have a window cracked in my kitchen, just a tiny little bit, so I give some airflow. I transferred my milk from the big pail into this smaller container for splashback reasons. Now we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to add a little lie at a time. I have my lie sitting just on the edge of the kitchen sink there. Okay, so when we're soaping with milk, um, what we want to do is go and add the lye slowly. And the reason for that is you don't want to scorch the sugars in the milk. If you scorch the sugars in the milk, your milk is going to go brown. It's not gonna wreck the soap at all. It's not gonna change anything. It might smell really bad. Um, you can still make soap with it. If in fact you were just to take that whole thing of lye and dump it in here, it would still work. Um, you would just end up with a little bit of some scorched milk. So one thing you can do is you could actually set this into ice cubes. If you had an ice cube tray, uh, snow, or you can just add them slowly. 
Sometimes if I find that my milk melted maybe a little too much before I got the lye going into it, I will fill the sink with cold water. I'm just putting a little cold water in the sink just because my milk did melt a little bit more than I wanted it to just because the oils took so long to cool down. So that'll just help keep this whole thing cooler. So all I'm going to do is just gently stir and then add a little bit of lye and stir some more. And you're just going to repeat that until all the lye is gone from there. Okay, so that's the last of my lye. There's still some little bits left in there, so I'm just going to scrape out what I can. And we're just going to keep stirring. And make sure this stays nice and cool. And then the really cool thing is I'm going to take this and I'm going to rinse it out with water and then put down the drain. Because after all, it's just drain over. <music> Guys, we're on the home stretch now. All right, so my oils were melted in this pot. I could, if I wanted, pour my lye milk mixture into this pot, but this pot's rather shallow and I worry about using the stick blender in it and having it splash. So I'm actually gonna put this into this nice pail in the sink here. The other reason why I don't like to use this pot to mix my actual soap in, um, besides the splash back issue, is it's just really hard to hang on to um, when I'm trying to pour it into the mold. Just make sure. Remember that I use this little red one to store my spatula in. So there is a little bit of oils in the bottom of it. Make sure we get them all in there. Even though we did account for a super fat, I still like to make sure I get everything in. Okay. So the next step, we are going to need our stick blender. Get this here. Now that our oils are in here, now we are going to add the lye into here and we are going to do this very slowly. We don't want to risk having any splash back. Now, we make soap. So I just like to stir it a little bit and then we add the stick blender. Now the nice thing with lard and with Crisco, Crisco is that they are both uh, fairly slow moving oils so they both um, take their time to come to trace. I've been stick blending for quite a while now. Um, like I said, lard and Crisco are both very slow movers. So the first thing we're looking for is um, seeing if when I do this, you can see the streaks left over on the soap. So that means that this is a very thin trace. I could get this a little bit thicker. You can see that the lines that I left from the spatula, they're still there. We could do this a little bit thicker. Um, it'll make it easier to pour into the molds. If you were wanting to put designs and stuff like that when you're a little more advanced, now is when you would do it. But as a beginner soap, this is the first stage that you're looking for. When you can go like that and you can see the designs left behind. We're at a little bit of a thicker trace now. I just want to show you what that looks like. 
so you can see like a thicker pudding consistency now. And you can definitely see all the streaks that are being left behind. So I try to clean off as much soap as I can. And I use towels. Um, I can throw them in the wash in three or four days after the soap has had time to completely become soap. And that way I am not wasting paper towels or anything like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I have this little mold here. This is not a necessity for you guys, of course. I just, uh, I do this so that I can give samples to people. You can see that it's thick like pudding. And it's not completely brown. It does have a little touch of a brown uh, color to it. That's not completely brown. So the last step, we are going to pour it in the mold. Okay, I'm gonna let this set for a few minutes and then I'm just gonna pop a quick design on the top of it. And while that is setting, I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning up the rest of the stuff. So as you can see, there's nothing left in that pail. What I didn't scrape out, I pulled out with the towel. The next stage in my cleanup is full on hot water and disc detergent. Now I know some people, um, leave their dishes uh, for 48 hours or so. Unfortunately, I don't have the space to do that. So I get washing them right away. I want to get my workspace cleaned up and out of the way so um, we can go back to normal life. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of these dishes and then we'll come back and by then the top will be ready to be decorated. My dishes are all cleaned up. Let's put ourselves a little design on this soap. I'm not much of a fancy person, so my designs are very limited in what I put on. Just a little Top. There we go. That's all I'm going to do. The last step I have is so I'm going to put my lid on and I'm going to go put this soap in the fridge. We're going to put this baby away in the fridge and we're going to say goodnight for 48 hours. This is going to make its way into the laundry basket, but you don't want to wash your laundry right away with this. I usually wait for three, four days, and then by then it's just soap, and it goes in with a load of laundry and just helps clean the laundry. So our soap has been sitting in the fridge for about 72 hours, although I'll be completely honest with you, usually after 24 hours I take it out, but we've been really busy on the farm here. I think I might actually be on day three that it's been sitting in the fridge. 
but it's okay. This recipe is very forgiving. Um, it's not super, super hard, so we should still be able to cut it. As a beginner soaper, you're probably not going to have money or the availability of getting yourself a nice soap cutter. When I first started out soaping, I got myself a cheap miter box from our local hardware store. Actually, I got this one really, really cheap because it was broken and a knife and I'm able to cut soap in this. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to cut a couple bars of soap in this, and then we'll finish cutting the soap in my nice cutter. If you'll remember, we made this little container with uh, the sample soaps in them. And what I like to do is I actually scrape off all the extra soaps and I put them in a container here. This is a silicone mold. Silicone can sometimes be a little tricky to get soap out of, and one thing that I find works really, really well is putting it in the fridge. So because this is a milk soap, we already put this in the fridge. And we just have to push, and we have a beautiful bar of soap. And then um, I actually just store these in shoe boxes while I'm waiting for them to cure, and you can put them in a closet, and they're out of the way, and um, they can breathe. Okay, let's go ahead and take the soap out of the mold. So again, I like to take all my scraps and keep them. This step is not necessary. You're more than welcome to throw the soap out. I just choose not to. There we go. Soap is all cut, all cleaned up. Now let's show you how to go ahead and use this miter box. One of the first things I do when I'm using a miter box is I'm gonna mark where I'm gonna cut my soap. So I know that this is one inch from the cut and this is where I'm gonna cut my line at. Another thing you can do is if you've decorated the tops, I tend to just do this all the time as instead of cutting like this, which would mean if you had something on the top, when you cut down through it, whatever's on the top, would streak down through your soap. If you turn your soap to the side, then it's more easily that you can cut it. Just a knife and in both sides and we're able to cut that. There you go. For those of you who've never used a um, soap cutter like this before, every time after you're done using it, you need to loosen the string. And then when she sings, she's ready to be cut. So I actually have marked on here um, where I need to place my soaps. And as you can see, it does make the job a lot easier to cut soap when you have one of these. But again, when you're first starting out, this is not necessary. Now that the soap is cut, I put it in a shoe box. I've put a few extra holes in the top of my shoe box. But I put it in this shoe box and this goes in the closet. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And mark the date on it 
and put this away for a minimum of six weeks. Eight weeks is best, but I actually find this recipe shines its best after three months. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Until next time, see ya. Grocery store, goats make so... <laughs>